All right, so what is up guys? In this Kotlin coroutine tutorial, we will be going over context and dispatches. And as you may have noticed, I already have a run blocking block here with a few launch functions. And each of them demonstrates a new thread being launched in a different dispatcher. So as you can see, this one has no dispatcher. This has dispatches unconfined, dispatches default, and one that creates an entirely new single thread. So let's just go ahead and click on play and see what this does. So you can see that the main run blocking starts on the main thread and the unconfined also uses the main thread. Then we have default, which decides to create its own worker thread. And finally, we have the dedicated single thread, which is working on the thread I called a banana thread. And that is just an arbitrary name that I decided to give it. But let's get started immediately with describing what each one of these coroutines actually does. So the first one I want to go over is the launch. And you may have noticed that we have no dispatches here. And every time you call launch without parameter, it inherits from the context from the coroutine scope it is being launched from. So if we launch it from run blocking, which starts in the main thread, this will inherit from that and launch it also in the main thread. So it just inherits. And up next is the dispatches.unconfined. The Kotlin documentation recommends you stay away from this unless you really know what you're doing. So what it does is it starts a coroutine in the caller thread until the first suspension point, and then it resumes the coroutine in the thread that is fully determined by the suspending function that invoked it. So at the moment, you can see that when we launch this, it starts on the main thread. And that is the context it had to work with, so it decided to continue on the main thread. But if we go ahead and create a suspend function in here, such as delay, and we delay that for 1000 milliseconds, you'll see that it will switch the coroutine context to whatever context the delay function has. So it kind of inherits from the last suspend function. And as you can see right here, the unconfined this time decided to work on default executor. So it just inherited from the last suspend function. And this unconfined dispatcher is appropriate for coroutines which neither consume CPU time nor update any shared data like UI confined to a specific thread. Up next, we will talk about dispatcher's default. The default dispatcher is the one that is used when coroutines are launched in global scope and it uses a shared background pool of threads. So launching dispatcher's default is the same as calling global scope.launch. And this patch's default is good for anything that is CPU intensive. And finally, we have the last one, which is a new single thread context. And this actually helps you create your own dedicated thread. But there's a catch to this, of course, because you need to make sure to release it and handle it correctly when it is no longer needed. Because creating your own thread is a very expensive resource. So you definitely need to be careful and make sure everything gets handled correctly. And those were the basic types that you could find in the Kotlin coroutines in IntelliJ. And for my next example, I actually want to show you in Android Studio how we can actually use these and how to change the context in case we need to do something such as update the UI after making a request from an API. So let's move on to Android Studio. And inside here, of course, after having added your dependencies to our build.gradle file, these two over here that I showed you in the first video, you want to go to your activity main XML. And inside here, I changed the constraint layouts to a relative layout. And then I went to the text view and I gave it an ID of TV underscore text view. The width and height are set to wrap contents. I set it to center and parents. I hard coded in the string of zero in the Android text. And finally, I gave it a text color of black and a text size of 40 SP. So what you should end up with is a very dark zero in the center of the Android screen. And after we've done that, we can actually go to our main activity. And inside here, the first thing we have to do is create a suspend function. So right down here, we're going to write private suspend function, and we are going to call this increment text. And right inside here, we're going to type in global scope dot launch. And of course we want to log what thread we are in. So we're going to type in main and inside here, after importing log, we will type in thread dot current thread and finally dot name. And right below, we want to create a repeat block, which will repeat five times. And inside here, we will set a delay of 1000 milliseconds. And right below that, we want to increment our number each time it loops. And of course, at the top of this suspend function, we should create a variable called number and we should initialize it with the value of zero so that we can get rid of that error. So as you can see here, we started a coroutine in the default dispatches. And that means we can't update 
the UI. If you try to, nothing will happen on your screen. So the way to get around this is to use another function that is provided by Kotlin, and this is called the with context. And this easily allows you to switch between different contexts such as main or the IO thread, and it just makes life a lot easier when you want to update the UI after making an API request or some network call. It just makes things a lot easier. So inside here, we want to change it to dispatches.main so we can actually update the main thread. And then we need to create a block. And inside here, we can set the text to our text view. And that's going to be the number to string. And that will take care of our suspend function. So we will increment the number on the screen each second by one and it will print it to the screen because we have switched the context from a background thread to the main thread. And at the bottom of this global scope dot launch block, we want to update our text view. So we're going to type in tv underscore text view dot text, and we're going to set the text to done. So we can tell that our coroutine has finished. Then under this suspend function, we are going to create another function, and this is going to be a private suspend function called make network request. And inside here, we are going to start a new coroutine. So we're going to write global scope dot launch, except this time we are going to use our dispatches dot IO. And this is made for essentially any network request, any request that is communicating with something external can be used on dispatches dot IO. So it's good for things like API requests and network calls. And inside here, we will add a log, which will say log dot I, and it will take main as the tag and we will write please wait then after that we will give it a delay of 1000 milliseconds and we will create another log that says making network request and we will delay it once again except this time for 2000 milliseconds and finally we will paste in one more log and this one will say network request successful. And at the end of this network request, we want to create a toast that shows the user that the network request has successfully been created. So we'll write with context. And as we did before, we are going to type in dispatches.main and create a block. And inside this block, we will create a toast message and it will take our application context. And inside the text, we will write network request successful and add an exclamation mark. Then we actually have to go to our on create so we can actually call all of this. And to actually call this, I'm going to create a run blocking block and insert the two suspend functions inside here. So first we will call increment text and then right after we will call our make network request. And that's all the code we have to use to make this sample project. So now let's actually go ahead and run the program. But first I'm going to minimize this window, open it here so you guys can see, and we will click on play. Then let's open up logcat and let's type in main so we can get events that are closely related to the main keyword. So as you can see, it's counting while it's making a network request, which shows that our coroutine was successful. And once this network request was successful, it printed out a toast that said the network request was successful. And as it was doing that, the number incremented all the way to five and it said done as soon as the coroutine was finished. So coroutines can definitely help simplify your project by making the syntax a lot easier to read and a lot more concise and efficient. And it also just makes switching the context between main and background threads are a lot easier. But with that being said, this is actually all I wanted to show you in this episode of Kotlin Coroutines. And in the next video, we are going to be going over how to use jobs in coroutines. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.